I really have lived my life and done things my way. It's rubbed people off the wrong way many times. But I don't care. I have discovered the, the secret of happiness. Just don't care what people think about you. And you will be happy. Because no matter what you do, there are people who, they are haters. You can't please everyone all the time. So why bother? Just live your life and don't care about what they think about you. Just do what you feel. That is what has got me at loggerheads with many people. Because many people look at me and all they see is Judge Ian, that harsh person who's, who never smiles. He has no friends. He has no family. Um, all he does is criticize, criticize, criticize. I walk in town and people notice me. They part. <laughs> it's like Moses. They passed and I passed through. And I see you in Ian. So you're in Ian. And for some reason, people don't think I can hear them. I mean, I get into a lift and people start saying, Aya, Ian, Ian. <laughs> and I turn and tell them, yes, and I can hear you and see you. And they are wishing the doors would just open. But I am misunderstood. I really am. I really am a nice guy. <laughs> Grew up in Kileleshua, went to Kileleshua Primary. Then my father got posted as a, an... Education attaché by Jomo Kenyatta, and we went to, to London and then to Bonn. So we spent a, a great number of years out there. So I've been to uh, six primary schools. Yes. So when, I, when we came back, I finished primary school at um, Park Road Primary, and then I went to Lenana School. Yes. Lenana when Lenana was Lenana. After that, went to college, many colleges. I have, I have um, been to college. I have been educated in education, um, philosophy, psychology, sales, marketing, and theology. Yes. <laughs> yes, theology. I could be a pastor. But I've always loved music and theater. I've never studied theater. I've never studied acting. I've never studied music. Never, never, never. It's just something that's, that's in me. And I've always been interested in it. I was always interested in it right from the time I was in school, taking part in debate, um, verse speaking, right from primary school. I was very mischievous. I was the boy who would be making, when the teacher's out, the boy who's making so much jokes. Teacher comes in, everybody is laughing. I'm the only one doing my work. Everyone gets punished but me. I was very cheeky. I don't think I've changed much. I still am. Then I went into Phoenix. After colleges, I, went, I started teaching. But then I'd also do a lot of theater. And I started doing my theater at Phoenix with James Falkland. And I would dash from school to go and do a production. And it went, it went on like that for quite some time. And until the time when James asked me, would I like to do this full time? And I thought, hmm, leave a, a guaranteed salary at the end of the month and come here not knowing what was happening. Because theater in this country, even now, it's always closing. Phoenix was always closing, and that's why it was called Phoenix. It was always coming out of the, <laughs> it was always coming out of the ashes. That bird will never die. <laughs> that is why it's called the Phoenix. And it was closing every year. Every time it was, we are, we're almost closing, we're almost closing. So he asked me whether I'd be interested in, take, in, in joining full time. And I thought about it for a long time. Three minutes, and I said, yes. <laughs> My family, thank God, they were supportive. So I quit teaching and went into theatre. From then on, I've stayed there for a long time. James passed on, and I took over as the, as the 
managing director. And I've played all sorts of roles. My one role I really, really remember is Whose Life Is It Anyway? It's the, li it's the story of a, a, it's a true story of a person who was paralyzed from the neck down and he couldn't do anything but move his head. And he wanted to die. So he, but he wanted to do it legally. So there was a court case and the court came to his bed. So I was the actor. From there on, it was during my acting time that I was told about this production that was coming and they needed, they needed judges, they needed teachers, they needed coaches and everything. This is TPF now. And I went to an audition because people think I just got the job just like that. Oh no, I auditioned. I auditioned. I was going to audition for either a teacher, a trainer, or a judge. So I went in and I auditioned for the judge. That was the first thing I did. And the people who were auditioning us, just he sang very badly and told me to say something. And I, and I said something. <laughs> and they just looked at each other and they just said, okay, that's it. Um, that was the end of the audition. So I walked out and I wondered, okay, what have I done wrong? Am I, okay, at least I have a chance to come back and audition. I was told, no, you don't have to. Gosh, was I that bad? And that way I got my role as Judge Ian. And I'm the, I was the only person who lasted the whole season. Everybody else would come and go, come and go. They'd call me back. I don't know why. People love torture. I don't know why. But was I really that bad? Was I really that mean? No, I was not. I was not. I was truthful. Kama nimbaya nimbaya. Besides, it doesn't mean that if I told them they can't sing, that that's the truth. That is my opinion. And opinions are like, everyone has one. Okay? So I don't know why people were so bothered about my opinion. One person. After the first TPF, people were really, really shocked at me. I would be stopped in town and people would say, why are you doing this? Why are you doing, especially since I was, I was harsh on the Kenyans. I was being told, why are you doing this to your own people? I don't discriminate. And... But later on, people started realizing what I, what I was trying to do. Some people still haven't understood what I was trying to do. I was trying to get them to work even harder. The music industry is, is tough. And these guys, when they come in, they are completely green. And they think they're going to come out into the world and have everything rosy. Oh, no. They need the truth slapped. Besides, it's reality. It's TV. I know I could use kinder words, but it wouldn't be nice for television. <laughs> it wouldn't. I mean, I could take them and tell them, that was, um, that was kind of nice, but you could try and do this and that. No. But I just say, rubbish. <laughs> it makes for good television. Let me tell you the truth about reality TV. There's nothing real about reality TV. <laughs> nothing. And all of this was completely unscripted. Unscripted kabisa. There was a time they tried to introduce scripts. I said, no, I can't do scripts. I can't. I like speaking before I think. <laughs> yeah. There are times I wonder, I, I listen and I say, gosh, did I just say that? I shock myself. Yes. It's nice to be like that. I'm a teacher right now at Brookhouse, and I also manage the theater there. I've taught, I teach the very small ones to the, small as young as four or five year olds to as old as 20 year olds because of, we have the BTEC courses, and I teach them as well. And p parents come in and they just are really surprised. Many parents, when they're brought in to see what's happening, um, they see my photo and they ask, is that Judge Ian? And they're told yes. And they're shocked. 
how can they let an animal like that with kids? But then they, let, they see me at break time and I'm always with the kids running around. I've loved, I've laughed and cried, I've had my fill, my share of losing. And now, as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that, and may I add, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. For what is a man, what has he got? If not himself, then he has not to say the things he truly feels and not the words of one who kneels. The records show I took the blows and did it my 